Okay, so there are a couple of things that I want to tell you about me. Uh, the first is that I have a s s speech impediment. I s stutter, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that in a bit. But the other thing that I want to tell you about is that I am obsessed with Twitter, and I mean it's kind of obvious why it's hilarious. People say the best things on Twitter. People are so funny, and they're so clever. I can't think of this stuff on my own, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, the other thing I love about Twitter is that it doesn't matter how high you go in the world, that we always are going to know exactly who you are, unfortunately. Yep. <laughs> um, the thing I love about Twitter, though, uh, is that um, is that it's a community, and it is a f fully f functioning one, and it's one uh, that I found um, in a time in uh, in m m m m m m m m m my life where uh, it really just kind of helped me to uh, view things in a different way. S so um, I s stutter, and um, uh, I've been stuttering ever since I was around uh, three years old. And so um, as a person who stutters, you kind of do um, these things where you are are trying to avoid stuttering. Um, it's um, a very embarrassing thing. Um, it makes me feel very insecure, and it makes me feel really uncomfortable. And so I f finally kind of uh, came to a point where I was like, okay, I'm just not gonna go to events. I'm I'm, I'm terrified to talk to people, and so I uh, kind of uh, was concealing um, my personality, my f thoughts, and my you know passions. And uh, that's when I found uh, Twitter. Uh, for the first time, I felt like I could really communicate uh, the way that I wanted to. I could s say uh, the words that I wanted to say exactly how I wanted to c communicate them. And um, I was able to show my real personality. So uh, this talk is about communities and building communities. And uh, communities are important because we're all a part of s several different communities in our lives, right? We have our friends. That's the community uh, that we choose. We have our family. The community that we're born into. And then we have, you know, conference communities. We have professional ones as well. Now, we don't always choose those. However, we are constantly finding ourselves in those communities. Now the um, definition of a community is a, uh, a social unit 
and um, everybody there has something in common, uh, whether it's your religion or your values or your I, I, Kennedy, you guys all agree on at least a couple of things. Now, great communities are going to keep you truly connected to uh, uh, the other people both in your community and to the world at large. Um, they are gonna make you care. Um, <laughs> they're gonna make you care about uh, the other people in, in, uh, in uh, the world and and uh, and uh, what's happening in the world around you. And uh, they're gonna give you some perspective and they're also gonna keep you grounded. Now, unfortunately, you know, some communities aren't that s strong. They're not that great. And uh, so uh, we need to figure out how to improve the communities that have some weaknesses, right? How can we make our communities great? Well, it is my belief that the only way that you are gonna have a great community, a powerful community, is through being empathetic. So the community uh, uh, that I'm gonna talk about today is uh, the one that you um, are going to have at work, right? So that's you, that's your teammates, uh, your bosses, your subordinates. And so the teams that we all have uh, are filled with people of of uh, different backgrounds, and and uh, we all have to find a way to kind of work work together to be patient with uh, one another um, to make great products. So. Uh, so, uh, so, how do you do that? Um, you see these people at work. Uh, you probably don't care for the people on your team. Uh, well, you know, s s some of them are fine. The other ones, well, like maybe not. So, how do you do that when you feel like these people are so different from you? Right? How you have 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 empathy for people uh, that aren't like you? Well, let's talk about empathy for a moment um, because I believe that it's the cornerstone of all of the positive and good things that are uh, going on in uh, the world. So empathy is defined as the ability to sh share and, and understand the feelings of, 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 uh, of, uh, of, uh, of uh, of uh, of uh, the people around you. Now, it's a very popular um, 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 uh, buzzword right now, and and people are always uh, telling you to you know be empathetic and 
and and uh, and uh, who have you know this empathy in order to make your teams better well how do you do that that's why my definition is that it's a verb it is you you know trying to consistently uh, really understand and truly sh share uh, uh, the feelings of those, you know, in and around your, your, your teams. So to figure out uh, what empathy is, let's kind of break down uh, the things that we associate with being empathetic. Uh, so people think that, you know, the act of physically, you know, connecting with another person is, uh, is being empathetic. Um, I think hugs are great. Hugs are comforting. Um, they encourage closeness, and uh, they can bring joy. I condone hugs. I just do not think that hugs are are very empathetic. You aren't trying to, you know, really understand uh, this other person. You are just trying to, you know, like make them feel better. Empathy is also not s sympathy. Now, s s sympathy is when we feel s sorry for what the other person is going through. And then we, you know, go along with our day as if it doesn't matter. So, uh, with empathy, uh, uh, that's actually, you know, ch ch trying to really understand uh, why that person is, you know, f feeling the way that they are, and then continuing to really engage them, hearing, uh, 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 their time of, you know, this this feeling. Empathy isn't isn't pretending to like another person. Um, I understand that um, uh, you have to work with people that you don't always like want to be around and you may not you know like really enjoy them as people however pretending to like a person is not going to to you know make you more productive or more engaged it's really just kind of uh trying to cover up the problem and and uh yeah uh, uh that's not good so to be really empathetic you have to be uh vulnerable now vulnerability is important because it forces us to truly feel. And uh, that's why it's an act of empathy, because it helps us to really understand. Um, it helps us to truly embrace people, and it, and it forces us to see that uh, the people around us are, you know, that. They're people. They have goals and they have dreams. And it, they are exactly like us. So being vulnerable when we're in the communities that we choose to be in, 
like with our friends and with our families, like that's really easy. As a result, it's very easy to also be um, extremely empathetic to those in the communities that we choose. Uh, we agree with them. You know, they are a lot like us. Therefore, it's easy to, you know, understand and embrace them and their ideas. When it comes to, you know, those that are not in the communities that we choose, it's oftentimes the total opposite, right? Uh, they don't agree with us, and so they probably aren't ever going to agree with us. They f uh, f think differently about a s subject that we're passionate about, and so I'm like, <laughs> and so we're probably never going to hit along. So, so being empathetic in groups is really hard because we t t t t t turn it off. And it doesn't have to be this way. Uh, uh, we don't have to view um, the communities that we don't choose as the as the opposition, because even though it is ch ch challenging to be. <laughs> to be empathetic towards those that are outside of our communities, it's not impossible. So what is the best way to be empathetic? What is the greatest act of empathy? Well, that's going to be entirely based in our communication. And that's because uh, uh, without communication, there is no collaboration. Um, so in my uh, former life, uh, I worked at a newspaper. This was back in 2004 when people still read like the physical copies of pretty much anything. And so um, uh, there was a guy, like he was the one uh, heck guy. And so if you had any problems, you would just go to him for pretty much anything, right? Like the printer is jammed or the printer isn't working or I can't turn the computer on, I can't turn it off. And so you would always go to him, right? And so, and so um, I would, you know, constantly go to him for the different issues that I would have. And, and, um, and um, pretty much every single time, like I would go to him, right? Like I would say like, hey, like I'm having this problem. Hey, I'm having that problem. Every single time, the first thing he would say, and he would say it with so much disdain, like, did you, did you restart, right? And he was so just pissed that I would even come to him with any of these problems if I didn't turn the computer off and then turn it on again. And so finally, um, uh, there was uh, one day where uh, there was a lot going on, like we're on a headline, and so I was having like this really big problem. And so I, I went to him 
Um, and I was really annoyed. And so I was like, hey, here's the exact issue I am having. Okay, here's uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the error message I'm getting. I turned it off. I turned it on again. And then I went and I uh, tried it on a different computer. And I did the same thing. And I'm s still getting the message, can you help me? And he said, yeah, sure. And so he came over to my computer and he walked me through exactly what I had to do in order to conquer this problem, right? And then after uh, we were done, um, he thanked me for being so patient. And then he said, yeah, like if you need, you know, um, uh, um, um, assistance with anything else, like, y you know where I am. And so I was actually really confused because he was not, like, friendly, right? Like, if you came to his desk, like, he was already completely over you, and he was like, I can't believe I have to put up with this shit every single day. It's like, this is your job, why are you being a jerk? And then it dawned on me, like, hold on a second. Like, I spoke to him in, in uh, the way that he could completely embrace and completely understand. And so, that's when I realized, right, like, to be an effective communicator, to, uh, to be an empathetic communicator, you have to speak to people in, uh, in uh, the way that they can really understand you. So if you uh, want to have a great community, a successful community, a great team, you need to speak to the other people there in their language. Um, so uh, I stutter. And um, uh, there's actually a conference that uh, you can go to every year. Um, it's the uh, National Stuttering Association, um, and it's pretty funny because uh, it's called the NSA Conference. <laughs> So it's always really great to tell people I'm going to the NSA conference. Um, so the uh, uh, first year I went was in 2014. And so uh, this was the first time where I had really like been around like a th thousand other people who either s s stuttered or were like the parents of people who stuttered or the siblings. And so I was pretty uncomfortable. I mean, you're there for like f five days and you're constantly confronted with the thing that you kind of hate about yourself and that makes you like incredibly insecure, right? And so I was there for five days and it was a really great experience. Um, however, on the f final day of the conference, um, they actually brought up um, a first t t t t time parent. Um, uh, his daughter was around 15 and he uh, caught up on stage in front of like a thousand people and he was like, look, I did not want to come here. I didn't understand it. I thought that it was going to be a waste of time, it was going to be a waste of money, and I was like, okay, like, I'm just going to hang out at, you know, the venue, I'm going to go to the spa, I'm going to drink, like, I'm not going to engage in this conference because I don't understand it. And then he said, well, I went to 
uh, the, the parent workshops. I talked to, you know, every single person I could. And now I feel like this has completely ch ch changed my view on, on the day-to-day -day experience of my, of my daughter. And uh, many said uh, that he was so excited and he was so, so, so genuinely happy that he really did give it a try, that he invested, you know, his time into, you know, just really trying to talk to people and really, whoop, really trying to understand. And I found that whole thing really fascinating because he said, like, yeah, like, I talked to people, but at the same time, like, I really paid attention to every single thing that the other people here had to say. And that, you know, listening, like, that's what really changed everything for him. And that's why it's so important that we really pay attention to what uh, the people uh, on our teams and our communities are really saying to us. They're truly is like no greater act of empathy than just listening. So powerful communities build really great things because uh, they are made up of powerful people. And I'm not just talking about like this like the the ch 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 chief executives or the presidents or those you know like really high up i'm talking about you know the other people there uh uh, uh the people that really understand you know their their r r r r r r r r role and powerful people embrace uh, their uh, their their r r r r r r r r roles on the team, and it doesn't matter how big or how s small it is. They uh, <sighs> they are okay with uh, that role. And, and uh, they know that it's an important role and that, and, that, and that they are still valued. Uh, 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 they also don't allow, you know, their, uh, their, their egos to get in the way. Uh, they, you know, view every situation and approach every situation with, with trust. And they are completely open. Uh, they are comfortable enough in their own s s skin to empower their teammates, and they and they really understand uh, that empowering their teammates is going to make you know their teams as a whole more powerful and more successful. 
and and uh, they know that it's more important to be s successful uh, in a group because um, you know teams success is always going to trump in individuals success and and uh, and uh, that's why powerful communities are inclusive and diverse communities and it isn't just a diversity of you know um, uh, color of the skin type of thing um, it's the diversity of thoughts and the diversity of ideas. Um, powerful people and powerful communities uh, 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 they know that it's okay to you know have have differing opinions and and different ideas as long as you you know listen to people and as long as when you do respond you are speaking to people in their language uh, and and the foundation of that of being able to do those two things is you know is being vulnerable because they understand that vulnerability is what makes us people. So, so doing all of those things, uh, is, especially at work, is going to make your team more powerful. It's going to make your team more s s successful. And um, the people on your team are going to be better collaborators as a result of uh, just being more empathetic and being more vulnerable. Thank you. Oh, did anybody have any questions? Sorry. I always forget about this part. <laughs> Go ahead. Hello? Okay. Um, I find that people often view empathy as a personality trait. And so Interesting. if you think of the people that you know, you can sort of pick out, this person is highly empathetic, this person lacks a good degree of empathy. Um, so in your experience, to what degree is that something that can be trained and kind of a learned skill as an adult? I mean, I feel like as long as you're not like a complete sociopath, you can learn how to, you know, like have more um, just empathy. Um, um, the degree of it, I mean, I feel like almost everyone can uh, find a way to, to uh, view people as people and not as non-people. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, teaching empathy, I mean, it just comes down to um, um, really encouraging people to listen to, uh, to uh, one another and, and, and do that from a place of like non-bias, right? Like when we're listening to people, like we're thinking about, you know, like uh, um, 
like our views and our opinions, one of them and two of like what they're saying, right? And so the best way to learn it is to just uh, start with just paying attention and, and uh, taking your views of them and what they're saying completely out of it. Is that helpful? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Do I just speak in? Oh, nice. Um, this might be sort of a bit of a weird question, but uh, like based on everything you said and even answering his question, I, I get we can learn to be empathetic, but how do you promote that? Like I, I work with a lot of developers and a lot of them are not really interested or see the value in, mm -hmm. in being open and being in a community or being part of a community and being empathetic. How, as someone who does see the value of that, um, how can I promote that, that desire, that, that value as well? I mean, so f for me, um, it comes down to culture, right? Like, we're all like so engaged and invested and like, yeah, well like, we have an awesome culture and here's all of the things in the culture that make us great. Like we have s sleep pods and dry cleaning services and all that other stuff. However, if we s stress that, you know, having, having, um, having empathy as the foundation of uh, culture is going to um, improve um, the entire company's just day-to-day -day experiences working together, right? So um, if people are being empathetic towards other people, uh, the biggest value is that people are going to be able to work better together and they are going to be more invested in trying to to um, you know both build other people up and build themselves up so you really have to come to it uh, from a place of like here's how it's going to help you as an individual and then the uh, result of that is going to be like, and oh, by the way, it's also going to help the team if you just, you know, invest in this. So we can talk about that more if you want. I'll be around. Yeah, cool. We're good. Thanks, guys.